Hey everyone, welcome back to Retro Tech. I'm Steve and we're looking at the PVM 20L2 again. This is the second part of uh, the monitor basically uh, rest rest restoration or um, getting it back in service and everything. So we've got it all clean on the inside and now we're going to go through the geometry settings. So let's just jump right into it. The first thing to note is to pull up the regular menu is just press the menu and this one, like the older menus, has the sub menu. You press A and B, or I mean, I'm sorry, the Gauss and Enter at the same time to bring up this. Now, some of these things, uh, like this white balance and things, you're going to have to have some kind of a light probe, I believe, to do that. So I don't get into this signal adjustments because I don't need to. So uh, we're going to just go through it here. And again, I'm not as familiar with this menu, so we might work through some troubles as I'm going through it. But the first thing that comes up here is our, you know, we're in here now, and you can see maybe on your screen deflection. So while that's doing that, let's go ahead and power up the uh, Super Nintendo here. And there we go. No more flickering on that screen, but can't really see it. So what I like to do is get into the 240p test suite and the best screen under the test patterns are the grids for geometry as well as your linearity screen we'll look at too. So we're starting off here. I've got our menu up. This monitor doesn't need a lot of adjustments. I hope you can see how good it looks. We talked in the past, if you see my other videos, about how CRTs are never going to be designed. They're not really designed to have perfect geometry. Uh, so if you're like looking for perfection and 3% is killing you, you'll have to get over it pretty much. 3%, it's, it's like a 97% design, whereas it's got a 3% error just built into it according to specifications in the manual. So, so we got when I get started here, which I've already done that, I like to center up the picture. So the grid here shows us our outline of the picture. I've got it a little bit too far down, but I like to see just an even black amount around the whole picture screen. That way I can get my sides as straight as possible. And the screen, I, if it needs a tilt, on the yoke at all, I'll be able to do that and see my results on every corner. I can tell whether my corners are bulging or not like this. And after I get the uh, rectangle set, I will expand it out horizontally and then vertically till those lines are just above our viewing area. That's the way I like to calibrate it. And what that does is it doesn't leave a line around because some games when you're dealing with 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit games, on RGB especially, you'll start to get where you can see one side or the other. Nintendo uh, games are the worst about it, really, so they, they're always shifting all over the place. That's why I don't use NES to calibrate, and Sega Genesis is okay to calibrate, but not as good. I, I feel like the Super Nintendo hits right in the middle in a sweet spot that manages to do pretty good on both the Nintendo and all the other systems, uh, you know, around that era from then on up to like PlayStation, you don't really end up having a big trouble if you just get it set kind of to the Super Nintendo version of the 240p test suite. That's what I always use, uh, and I've tried other ones, but this one just seems to have the most consistent and, and be work, works uniformly better across all lines because you'll still run into times where certain games we'll end up seeing one of the lines on one of the sides or something where it'll be just off center. You could go in and change it for that game. But, you know, that's, that's just going to be something you're always going to deal with, too. So, again, that's why I'm using this particular ROM card and this particular uh, Super Nintendo. So, again, we'll expand this after we're done. For the time being, though, let's go ahead and just disconnect this, and we'll try to go through some of these, and I'll plug it back in so I know that on the camera you can't see the menu while I have the uh, grid up. So... We're over here, we've gone down to the deflection one. There's a focus uh, selection on here, which I don't really recommend unless you have a problem with a blurry screen. Then you can go in there and try to mess with those focus settings. But we want to go in here and see how it says raster H and raster V. So that's our horizontal and vertical 
settings. So let's go in here and we'll plug our thing back in here. And the first one is size. Now, I'm not as concerned as this middle one, this, bl this horizontal blank left. Uh, we're not worried about that one. We're doing the top one and the bottom one mostly out of those three settings. The top one is the size. So right away, if I hit enter here and I start to go up, you can see how it expands out the sides of my grid. So we're just expanding it. And that's what I mean when I say we want to get it just past. See how if we get everything uniform, we go just past that viewing area with those lines on this grid. It's really a great setting uh, to play ROMs with. So, you know, we're not, again, I'm going to you just hit enter to go back and forth back there. And then the position. So the position, it's on 80 now, but you see if you move it left to right. So I want you to see something right here. If I go over 80, I start to get this wiggle here. And it, it skips. And I don't want it to do that. So I go back to where it's 80. And then from there, uh, let's pick up the camera. I'm going to show you something around the back. There's a little potentiometer that we've been talking about here, right there. And if you spin that, it'll actually center up your picture. So if your screen starts to shake like that, that means you're getting maybe too far, too far out of the settings. And... So you're getting too far out of the settings and it's starting to mess with your performance on there. And it, you don't want to have any of that jumping around because you won't be able to fix it then. It'd be hard to make any adjustments with the screen flickering like that. So 80, and it's centered on there. And that's position. Position, that just means horizontal position. So enter, and then exit, which is above that. And then let's go down to the vertical raster, which is going to be the same thing. It's got a size and a center, and this one's got the blank or black at the bottom. So we're just going to be again using these two top ones. And if we just go, so for some reason it's the order is different on the horizontal deflection, but size, and you can see there we're expanding, getting bigger, and then we actually need to get this centered up a little bit better anyway. So I want it to go up a little bit more, and there you go. So that's going to adjust your center. And then you hit, and you always want to hit enter, and then it'll record your setting you just made. If you don't want to record the setting you just made, and you want to go back to whatever it was, then simply hit exit instead of enter. But just remember, if you make a setting and you want to record it in the memory of the monitor, you need to hit enter. So exit again, and now you see the, let's see, I'll make sure I pull that out. So then we've gone through horizontal, vertical, now there's geometry. So first, let's just show you these settings. So we got S linearity and C linearity, and those are two linearity settings. Now I had someone asking about this, I think this is this S linearity setting in the comments um, earlier. And so this one appears to have that linearity setting in the geometry menu, but this is probably when they added it because I've never seen uh, anything just than a, a V linearity, just a one linearity uh, setting on other monitors. So if you have an older M unit or 19 you know, numbered unit or 2030 or something, it definitely doesn't have those on there that I've seen. That must be something that's new. So that's gonna change the vertical uh, linearity, those two settings. And then we've got trapezoid which is just another term for the screen tilt. So that's gonna affect the way like this, the top of the screen comes forward and, and looks larger and then the bottom goes back and looks, so it's just tilting it kind of on like that plane where it's coming, the top's coming towards you or the top's going back and whatever one's coming towards you, the bottom or top's doing the opposite. And so it's just like that. So that's what the trapezoid is. These are, you can see how many side pin cushion controls that we have here. I'm not sure about this power control. I've not used it yet. These side pin cushion controls or whatever, they are your corner controls. So we'll go through and I'll show you some of those, but they're going to expand the corners out or in and make it, you know, those are the ones that we've seen before. 
it's called like pin amp and pin phase. Well, now they've got it broken down where they've actually got it more. So you can actually do the top of the corners and you come down to um, a little bit further on the screen and affect that part of the corner and then the middle and then that. And that. So that's why these ones have, uh, that's what they did to make these a little bit better is in these menus, they added more controls to individual parts of your geometry calibration. There's still no magic setting for all this. You can see what your monitor has pretty much been standard set at, but this one has the standard settings. I've gone through and tweaked them a little bit just to make that square look like the way, or the rectangle look the way it is we've seen. But I'll show you some of those. That's what those all do, those pins. There's four of them on there, and that's what they do. Let's see what else we can get ourselves looking at here. That's it on that geometry setting. So let me go ahead and put the screen back in, and I'll walk you through each one of these steps and let you see what I'm talking about. So we will do the linearity last. Let's do the trapezoid state so you can see here. Now watch as these expand and retract. So first thing I'm going to do, looks like 24 is the bottom set. Nope, there we go. Okay. So see how that 63, see how that goes back and forth like that? Like you see, makes that so Again, I just hit exit to come out. I didn't hit enter to write my settings, so that's why I can just show you what these do and not really worry about it. So that's again, you can just play around with these, see what you like, and you don't have to record your settings if you're worried about it. You just want to get comfortable with what these settings do and you've not done this before. Let's start looking at the pins. This is the first one called side pin. And just try to watch what it does on the screen. See how it's, it's really contracting the tops of the corners a lot. So you can do it that way, or if you blow it out the other way, it'll do the opposite, where they go way out. So that's how you control that. So if you get a monitor and it looks like this, start working with these pin cushion adjustments to get it less you know, wonky looking an hourglass figure, or the opposite, where it's a bubble globe figure looking map almost. And so I'll hit exit again, go back to our settings. Same thing, let's go down to the next one, which is pin W. See what it went. This one, I think it does the same thing. It's just a little tighter controls. Like this one seems to adjust it closer to this area, what I was telling you about. So if, you're, if your side's really crooked, it's because those settings have been adjusted and they, they need to just be put back to a, a, you know, where you're trying to get this as straight as possible. Don't kid yourself on trying to make it as straight as like a ruler. Just try to get it straight enough to where it's acceptable uh, while you're playing. So exit out of that setting and let's just keep going through them. This one's pin balance. Let's see what this one does. So that one again, it's just that one's actually moving it left and right. You can see the corners shifting them left and right. So that's more corner control. Let's see what the very last one does. This one should, that one expands the center more. So that's like your sexy. On your other ones, it looks like that's what that pin control S is. I'm sure that's what that means. So we'll just go up here and let's see what this pair of control is just by pressing it. Okay, so that's obviously our, our screen tilt kind of cool. So that's what that one is. You can use that one then if your screen looks leaning or leaning. Now remember, if your screen's leaning uh, top down and, and matching corners like, like the whole screen's tilted, that's probably going to need to be a physical yoke adjustment. You can go check my short talk videos for yoke adjustments. That's the same pretty much for any monitor. But if you see what I, where it just looks screen tilted, but the lines are still parallel and visible up top, that's when you got to come in here and, and work with the para control. So let's get back out of that. And that's all for that, uh, for that deflection settings. That's your deflection control on this monitor. Option, this would be for our option card. Let me get this back off here so you can see it better. This would be for our option card if we have one installed. I will test this one before I put it, before it gets done on the option side, but just so you know, there's no option card loaded in this and we're not using it, so that's why it's blank. System, this is just giving us some internal system settings. You can go in here and check out whatever you want. It'll tell you model inch, model type, version of the factory settings, so, you know, anytime that there's not really much you can do in there. 
And that's pretty much all of it you're really going to be controlling on here. Okay, so that's, that's how we get into that menu. So to get out of it, we need to hit our input button that we're on. Okay, and then we can hit back the uh, menu button and we'll be back here at the other regular menu because there's still a couple more things we need to talk about in this menu. And that's the second one. This is your color temperature balance. I've got it into one of the preset D93 color temperatures. That's the one I like. It's got more of the whiter, um, I feel like it's a brighter color look to it. If you like the softer color temperature look on it, that's what the D65 pretty much is. And then there's a set, um, a manual setting. So you go in there and you go hit enter and you see you can hit enter again and it'll get you over here where you're yellow and you can flip through those three color settings. That's the color temperatures. If you want to go in there and play with it, I just like the D93. So if it looks good in the current color temp, it's a, a factory setting, one of those two, you can usually make those work, I feel like. I feel like they're good settings. Get back out of that, press exit again, and let's just keep going down. Subcontrols. So if you go in there and you hit enter and you go down to your adjust on the subcontrols, this is where you can adjust brightness and contrast. That's all you can adjust on uh, RGB. Or when you get into component, you might be able to adjust some of these other things as well as like S-Video and then composite, then you can adjust all of those things. Those are more of filters to help you make your older, lower end signals look a lot better. Um, so that's what you can do. And you can also go in there, if you feel like your monitor is too bright, and even with, you know, these, these knobs on the front should be kind of a standard setting where it's in the middle, is a good middle on your brightness, so you can turn it up or turn it down as you need to. Same thing with the contrast. So if you find out that your monitor's been too much brightness or too much contrast in the neutral setting, go into these controls and adjust it down or up accordingly. And that way you don't have to do anything behind the monitor. It's all done right there. So if you have blooming or too much of that, just do that. So this again is how we change from RGB to component. If we were to change the setup on that, a lot of this other stuff doesn't matter. You can put this on a DDoS delay where it'll just delay that initial boom DDoS when you turn it on a couple seconds or however long. Don't really need to do that. I, I don't know why, but somebody had a purpose for that. And then there's all these pin, you know, assignments. If you're using some kind of switch box, I think, uh, something that you're not really going to be worried about. And then this option configuration, if we had the option card in here, it would do the same thing. If it was the SDI card, it would just say SDI, give us a couple options for that. If it's the RGB card, it will say, can you want to change it to RGB or component? And that will be pretty much it for it. So I hope that that is helpful. So let's now go look at the shell, which is going to be like anything else. We'll scrub it and then we'll reassemble the monitor and we'll um, run another test when it's closed to make sure it looks all good and it'll be ready to go getting ready to clean this thing off. There's not really any secret trick to this part. This thing's safe to just hose off. And then if you've got extra residue left over, you can just hit it up with either some alcohol, some WD-40, Goo Gone, or Windex. Um, I'm going to use this little, this is like an organic, just um, Myers clean. I'm going to try this out on some of the hard spots. It'll have a nice lemony scent, but I'll get everything out. So first, I'm just going to spray it off. Let's take a closer look. So you can see typically what you're looking at inside here. There is some dust. It's that big, just nasty dust built up on the inside there. So it'd be good to just spray it out and let it sit out and air dry. Just make sure it's absolutely dry. So let's just go ahead and start spraying it out. And then we'll get going.
All right, so I'll finish cleaning it up and then we'll come back to it in a minute. Well, here we are and our cleaning's for the most part done. I like to use little boxes like that and set it on there so it doesn't interfere with my edges. It's a cool little tip. Let's get you a mailbox and do that. Well, you can set it on there and flip it around and get it nice and dried out for you. But it's nice and sunny today. So, like, I'll flip it back and forth like this for the next few hours. Just take a look inside here real quick. See how it's just nice and shiny now. We got pretty much all that residue off. So once it's dried off, I'll come back and take a nice towel, nice clean soft towel, and rub everything down and just get it nice and shiny. And then it'll be ready to go right back on the back of the monitor. But now we'll go right back on the monitor since it's been cleaned and wiped down. And then we'll do one more test after we do that. All right, everyone, so we are back. It's been reassembled, and it looks great. I want you to see this grid one more time. See how I've got it all uh, spaced out, the arity, and you'll notice, you know, pretty linear. Uh, see on this linearity screen, it looks like it's a little lower. That's okay. Our full circle's here, but these corner circles are a little lower. Well, that's just kind of the way the setting goes. So notice this gra this one that hits a lot larger. So you can see that's why it's expanded more into the viewing area. And um, just look at how uniform and nice the screen looks. One more, color bars. I like this one too that shows you the color bars as well as the um, graph or the uh, geometry. So um, that's pretty much it for the settings. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on just some other game that's got a little bit of a darker background so you can see it. And let's just go with this one. I like the way this one looks on here. So let's take a look at this and uh, let's go ahead. Try to zoom in a little bit. The white screen won't work, but just a, an all around good looking screen. So as it's going, Let's just go ahead and walk around and take a quick look at it cleaned up. There we go. Look at that. Almost as good as brand new. This is a pretty minty conditioned one and not a lot of usage on it. Later in its life it was replaced it seems like and just forgotten probably. So let's just see. See the contrast. We can take the contrast down on there a little bit and then same thing with the brightness. So, there we go. So, again, let's take another little tour around it. Very beautiful monitor. RGB, Sony, perfect. So, I hope again that today was helpful in some way that uh, maybe you can see some scan lines on there. If not, it's okay. This is a very sharp picture, very clear, very clean and crisp. And again, 600 TV lines is a very good sweet spot for RGB and 240p signals uh, and even 480i. 480i will look really good on this monitor also. So it's another long run through for this monitor. Please, if you've enjoyed this or if it has helped you at all, please help me out by go ahead and hitting that like button on this video and any other videos you watch that are helpful, please do the same and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you again and have a great day.